several years ago, I did a program about one of my most influential teachers, Charlotte Grady Fitzpatrick. She was the speech and drama teacher at Penyan Academy for many years, and she taught me a lot about how to learn, how to be in the world, and how to be a teacher myself. For that program, I interviewed many, many of Mrs. Fitz's students, colleagues, friends, and family. But probably the best part of that whole performance was a letter I received from my friend, Stephanie Olson. Mrs. Fitz's classroom was an oasis of acceptance and understanding where we knew we were safe. It was a place we could try out parts of ourselves we didn't even know existed. She provided us with warmth and light and the space to grow. I think the principal often put problem students in her class. <laughs> I imagine one of those guys once standing in front of the class for the first time about to present one of the speech assignments to tell the others about how to do something one was good at. He have a toothpick hanging out of the corner of his mouth and probably hoping it was a Marlboro. And he'd start out mumbling something nobody could hear. And Mrs. Fitz, she would give him a radiantly encouraging smile. It didn't matter if he was describing how to steal hubcaps off a car. She would sit there nodding and occasionally saying as she was following every word, isn't that interesting? I didn't know that. And suddenly, that kid would stand up straighter and start speaking from the heart. Mrs. Fitz gave us all a place in the sun. Charlotte Grady Fitzpatrick was a real teacher. But we've both been privileged to know many real teachers in our lives. So a few years ago, the two of us set out to interview them about their work. Most of what follows this evening are the questions we asked and the answers they gave. These are the voices of some wonderful, real teachers. This is a story about a young teacher who was in one of my university classes for practicing teachers. I asked them why they had become teachers. Now, this young man was from Central America. He had come to this country when he was about 11, and he moved into an apartment where a lot of family was living. He hardly ever went to school, started hanging around with the wrong crowd, even got involved in a gang. And then he got put in a school for problem kids, and he hardly ever went there either. But he said, one day I happened to be at school, and the teacher asked a question. I answered it. And the teacher said, that's a genius answer. It was only four words, but it changed my life. That's a genius answer. It meant I could learn. I could, I could be good at school. So, I decided I wanted to be a teacher so that someday I could say to somebody, that's a genius. 